Happy Halloween. Look, I know it's not Halloween, like at all, but just hear me out. I have a very spooky story. The spooky story is about going to the North Carolina Zoo on my fifth grade school trip, which I still tell to people to this day. Why do I hold a grudge against the North Carolina Zoo? I don't know, but it's pretty funny. Also, I have community tabs now. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna do polls and also other stuff, but for right now, it's just like a sort of update thing where it's like, here's all the things for my next videos or for sneak peeks. So go check that out if you want. All right, on to the story. So my fifth grade year was the year that I met my best friend. I think it was one of my best years of my school career so far. Still have this year and next year until I move on to college, so. Funnily enough, I don't think I've been on a field trip ever since the fifth grade. Well, no, that's a lie. We went to go see the movie Wonder, which is a really good movie. But before that, my fifth grade science teacher told us that we were going on a field trip soon. He didn't tell us until a week before we left for the North Carolina Zoo. You know, everyone was hyped, everyone was excited. I was excited because I was like a biology kid. I love science, I love animals, I love plants, I love everything science. And my best friend was also excited. So we were, we both turned around in our permission forms. And she's like, all right. So just so you know, Sam, your mom will need to be on the bus with us. And you know, I didn't like care for that because you know, my sister could come and like, you know, be like a fun little family trip. We took like one of those fancy buses, like the Abbott buses, like the marching band kids know what I'm talking about. The, like the Abbott buses, those are just amazing. I wasn't able to sit by my friend though. It was a pretty awkward situation between me and this other guy who I didn't know. And for some reason, someone brought Andy Griffith, like the DVD. That was like the only entertainment that we had on the bus besides the rich kids who had like phones and stuff. But you know, I was sitting there playing with whatever I had in my backpack. Eventually we get there and it's it's a very fun trip. But we see all the cool animals and like everyone's like going around and like looking at all the different animals and I'm going around looking at all the different animals. Me and my best friend pretend that we're in Antarctica for like five minutes. There was a, like a small igloo and it was really cool. Actually had a phone, but I wasn't able to use it on the bus until we actually got to the zoo because my mom had it. There was also like the tubes where you go in and you're basically like, you think that you're inside of like a lion exhibit when you're not, and you're just protected by a plastic dome. Still today, I think is one of my favorite things to do at a zoo or like an aquarium or something like that. And after a while, we head on over to the desert exhibit the aviary exhibit if you want to be like a scientific douche about it which i am so i called it the aviary exhibit for a little bit of context my mom is horrified of birds claims to not have ornithophobia but everyone in this family knows that she probably has it even though she loves owls she absolutely adores owls every other kind of bird she just does not like this will be helpful to understand why the most important event at this place just took action so take it as foreshadowing we go in there and lo and behold there are cacti everywhere and not like just like small cacti no this is like the big boy like big cacti like like the ones that you would see like down in arizona or like it, it like comically large cacti at least two of fifth grader and you know, I'm, I'm looking around, just like looking all at the cool like reptiles and birds. Then all of a sudden, a bird flies out to the glass, and bumps on the glass. My mom, who was watching the bird for some reason, got scared of the bird and jumped back. Now I was watching this as it happened. I was also looking at the glass exhibit where the bird was being held. So she knocks me back. I go flying like in a Dragon Ball Z fight. I lose my balance and I tumble over onto the back end of some cactus. Cacti. I meant to say cacti. Now not only were there big boy thorns, there are also tiny fiberglass needles. Not only were there real cacti, but there were there was also fake cacti. So I have fiberglass shards all up and down my back and down my legs. The biggest thing was 
that there were three, maybe four thorns, giant thorns, stuck to the back of my head. My head's been through a lot of trauma in my younger days. I ran into a piano, fell backwards onto a grandfather clock, and people ask me if I have brain damage and I say no, even though I probably do. But I've never broken a big part of my head. I guess that's what drinking a lot of milk does to you. Gotta get the calcium in. So my mom and my science teacher helped me out and they're like trying to get all of the fiberglass off of my pants and off of my back while the, while the big, big thorns are just in the back of my head, just like waiting. Just like, yeah, you'll never get us. Yeah. And like, you shut up. I'm trying to, I'm trying not to cry here, all right? So someone comes pick us up in a, in a, in a golf cart. And the craziest thing is, is that they say, well, don't worry. Um, anytime we'll give you a free tour of everything and we'll give you a free pass once you come back. And of course my mom said thank you in her customer service tone. But after, after we left, the, after, you know, we got back from the infirmary, she was like, yeah, we're never going back there. So we get to the infirmary and my science teacher had already left because, you know, you can't leave kids behind at a zoo because otherwise things like what just happened will happen. And the nurse that was there, the, the poor nurse, was just like, look, we, 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 can't, we can't do anything legally, so if, if you want, you can try to get the thorns out of your son's head. We can't do anything legally, so sorry. Here, here are the tools. G go ahead, you'll be fine. And of course, my mom was like, uh, fine, I'll try but I'll, I'll be leaving in like half an hour to go get my son some actual medical help. And so they, they provided us luckily with numbing cream, but after like five minutes, it wore off. So that whole time I'm sitting there crying and sobbing quietly while my mom's trying to get at least one of the thorns out. And she does, she gets one of them out. I mean, a uh, props to her for actually doing that. I know I wouldn't have the guts to do that to my own kid, but she's like, all right, that was way too hard. I'm way too tired. Let's just go to the car and I'll drive you to a, like a, like an urgent care and we can get you some help. And so my sister stays behind at the zoo because you know, she doesn't want to miss out on all the cool animals. And so does my best friend. But we get to the urgent care and my mom's like, look, my son's got a lot of thorns in his head. It doesn't seem all serious, but it is like head trauma, like some pretty serious head trauma. So we're like, okay, we'll wait here for like five minutes and we'll get you in in the back. We wait and they bring us in for the examination on how to get these out, which I don't really know how you can examine thorns in someone's head. They're like, hmm, yes, these thorns are thorns. But they have me lay on my side and I'm, I'm watching the Aquabats Super Show, which was like one of my favorite shows as a kid. And they have some actual like numbing cream instead of just some dumb freaking pain relieving sort of thing. And you know, they, they go around and they, you know, they get all the thorns out and they're like, all right, well, that that's done. We also have a shower if you want to take a shower to get all the fiberglass off you. And of course my mom's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, please. So we go to pick up my sister. She has this um, plush, this plush lion for me that I still keep with me. Um, his name is Leonoius. He's he's great. So like the day after, which was still a school day, like my friends are coming up to me and they're like, "Dude, like what happened? Like are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Just a couple of stitches. It's not it's not that big of a deal." Of course, I used that to my advantage when you know everyone was like you know, being all, no, no, oh, no, I feel so bad for you. Is that to gain a bit of popularity? It didn't work. But it's still one of my favorite stories to tell to this day. And even when I bring it up to my mom, she's just like, we totally could have sued them. We could have, we could have made money off of that. We could have made money off of your injury. She doesn't actually say it like that, but you, you know, like we could have sued them. By the way, mom, um, I, I don't think I ever formally about like, forgave you well I, I mean you know i forgive you but yeah like 
I forgive you. Like it wasn't your fault. It's not. It's not my fault or your fault that you have an irrational fear of birds. Maybe it is rational. Maybe you got like pecked on by like a lot of birds as a young child. I don't know. But yeah, that's basically the entirety of the story of my North Carolina fifth grade school trip. That totally wasn't traumatizing. If I were to ever go back there, I probably wouldn't go into the aviary exhibit, which you might be wondering if you've been to the North Carolina Zoo in the past couple of years, there's no aviary exhibit. It's because they took it down because of accidents like mine. My accident was the one that pushed them over. So yeah. Next time that you go to the North Carolina Zoo, just be careful with people that have a fear of birds around cacti because you never know what's going to happen. That's basically it. See ya.